The snake that came into the garden was actually Enlil's brother, Enki. Millions of people were on this planet long before Adam even arrived, and then Adam was born. The first genetically modified, what they called to perfection, uh, human being, Homo sapien. Let's talk a little bit about this pantheon that came to Earth. There's a couple of really interesting gods, lowercase g, that came here. The first one is Anu. Now, he wasn't the first one here, but he was considered to be the fatherhead or the Lord God. He was over the main gods that came to this planet. His name was Anu, A-N-U. Hence, the name that, was, that humans gave them, the Anunnaki, okay, Anu. So they gave still credit to Anu as the fatherhead or the God figure. He mostly ruled from space or from the sky or from heaven, as the ancient texts say. And Anu had sons, okay? His sons were Enki and Enlil. These people, these three, are considered gods. They were deified by the peoples of Earth. They uh, masqueraded as gods, except for en uh, Enki, Ea Enki. He kind of had a certain level of empathy and sympathy for human beings. Uh, he even married a human being. He used to have sex with human beings. He had a baby by a human being. Uh, one of his uh, relationships resulted in a baby named Zizudra, who's actually Noah in the modern day Bible. And so that, that story is copied from the Epic of Gilgamesh. However, these people uh, were not gods. They were flesh and blood, blood people. They weren't multidimensional people. They weren't some, from, from some other universe. These were people that walked around just like we do, but they were knowledgeable. They had advanced technology. They had wisdom beyond what, what, we, what we had. They knew about genetics and, and how to modify genetics. They knew about chemistry. They knew about alchemy. They knew about quantum physics and quantum mechanics. They understood planetary alignments. They understood navigation through stars as, well, as left behind by some of these Sumerian tablets that depict star maps. So this is information left behind that it's not coming from Billy Carson's brain. It's coming from what they left behind as wreckage for us to learn from and to understand exactly what went on in the ancient past. Now, what's interesting is these two were at odds with each other. You have on the right hand side, you have uh, Enlil. Now, this guy is uh, was given control of Earth, even though his brother Enki was the Earth was named after him. His name is E-A, capital E, capital A, space, and key. Uh, now, key uh, is the name for Earth in ancient times. And Ea was the beginning of his name. So it became over time Earth, E-A-R-T-H, just so you can know. If you go back into the tablets, you discover this. Now, he was supposed to be ruling over Earth, but there is no real true information as to why he wasn't given the true full power as his brother Enlil. Enlil ended up ruling and running the planet, superseding him, and he actually had to operate underneath, as far as the totem pole going with power, he was underneath Enlil, even though he wasn't supposed to be. There's no real understanding as to why. We could never find it. Nobody's ever found it yet as to why that happened, but that's the way it happened. Now, Enki was a scientist, a natural physicist, a geneticist. Enlil was more of a battle king ruler uh, and also an engineer and uh, architect. Uh, and Lil uh, created this place called Eden in Mesopotamia, E-D-I-N. And in this Eden, it was an outdoor laboratory with this huge gate and guards, armed guards surrounding it, as evidenced in the Apocrypha text. So if you read the Book of Adam, you discover that there were armed guards at the gates to Eden, and those, uh, those armed guards would prevent you from leaving or prevent you from coming in. It wasn't like, uh, hey, you can't come here. It was like, if you come over here, we're going to kill you. And you can read all of that in the, that's a whole nother podcast. Read the book of Adam in the, from the Apocrypha. It was left out of the Bible on purpose because it's too brutal. Uh, Adam, Adam even tries to commit suicide a couple times because he's so distraught about as it, what he figured out what happened and who, who they really were. That's in the Apocrypha text. You have these two guys here. Eden's been uh, Eden's been created, and you have uh, a lot of these beings coming through in and out that they've been working with creating. So they started with cloning the existing hominid on this planet, and using this cloning technique, 
which would create a worker, but then it would fail because the worker would die early, would die, die rapidly. Uh, and also the worker could not reproduce, right? It's like trying to make a, you know, trying to, you know, once you made a, made a, a donkey or a mule with a horse, the offspring can't have any babies. So whatever splicing technique they used to do this, the failure point was that they couldn't, re re they couldn't reproduce. And it was a lot of work to keep creating more and more of these offspring the manual way. So they came up with an idea. Uh, their sister did actually. Uh, she said, you know what? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the baby to term myself. So that was the solution. So what she did was she took one of the hominids uh, from the from the captured people that were in the Eden, right in the in the laboratory. She took an egg out of the woman and added the essence uh, to it, which means they probably genetically modified it or added some DNA or whatever they did. She made a zygote in modern terms, what we would call a zygote, inserted it into her womb during her menses, and then took the baby to full term. 10 months, according to the tablets, 10 months, and then Adam was born. The first genetically modified, what they called perf to perfection, uh, human being, Homo sapien. So Homo sapien, people were already here. Millions of people were on this planet long before Adam even arrived. So forget that Adam was first and Eve was first, and then they were, you know, they had, no. There were people here already, and I covered that in a previous video, but to add credence to that, after Cain killed Abel, he asked, he told God that, uh, which is really in Lil, that, you know, the people out there are going to kill me. What people are out there? And he told them, no, they won't kill you. I'll put a mark on you so they know you're my boy. And by the way, you when you get out there, you'll find your wife. So there are people already here. Many, many, many people. Adam was just one of the very first uh, genetically modified to what they considered perfection because he can listen, he can obey, he can uh, take command, uh, he can handle the workload, and as well as he can reproduce. That was important to them. Okay. And so where we have the Garden of Eden situation is where Enlil comes back after some time. And uh, while he's gone, though, but before he comes back, while he's gone, I'm sorry, he goes away. Before he comes back, uh, Adam and Eve, and how do we get Eve? Well, they figured out that Adam was mating with these other splices that they had created and it wasn't working. So they, they put him to sleep and they took some of his DNA out of his bone and they created Eve as a clone of him. And then they made it the two together and she was able to get pregnant. However, they were in the garden um, of Eden, which is an outdoor laboratory setting. They had timed mating sessions. It was like you were cattle. It was timed. It was okay. Now it's time for you to go mate. Okay, go back into your, your area. Things like that. And they started mating, mating uh, him and other people they had created like bucks. Right? It's just like from the slavery times. Well, anyway, Adam and Eve are in the garden and they, they're talking to the serpent. Now, you have to remember in ancient times, the serpent represented wisdom, understanding, knowledge. It had nothing to do with evil. Anywhere you see a serpent depicted in ancient text, tablets, cylinder scrolls, papyruses, it's about wisdom and understanding. You see the two entwined snakes make the caduceus. That's for the medical industry, right? He's still spills today. It had to do with knowledge and wisdom, understanding. Uh, and so the snake that came into the garden was actually Enlil's brother, Enki. He felt bad for the humans and he wanted to, wanted to talk to Adam and Eve and let them know that they were nothing more than nothing less than them, that they had the same consciousness. They had the same uh, possibility of ascending to higher levels of consciousness and understanding that they weren't animals uh, and that uh, and that they themselves who ruled over them weren't even gods. And what that did was that caused a firestorm in their brain. They were like, wait a minute. We are like you. We're not animals. We are conscious, sentient beings that have the capability to think, feel, and create our own decisions and, and have free will, just like you guys do. Yeah. Oh, man. That's when the awakening happened. And that's when they started looking for clothes and everything else. That was the serpent. The serpent had nothing to do with a snake crawling on his belly and all this other crazy foolishness. When Enlil comes back, he obviously doesn't know this happened, which is, which is interesting because I'm about to read some Bible quotes in a minute. He comes back and he, he realizes that something's changed with these two. They done woke up. Like they really woke up. They got on clothes. You know, they understand that they're who they are now. And so he gets pissed off. He gets pissed off at his brother because he realizes his brother spoke too much. Right? He violated their little, their little rule. 
Right? You know, don't engage with them and give them the wisdom and knowledge of who they really are. Just masquerade as a god so we can keep them under control. So what he does is he kicks Adam and Eve out of the garden. The reason why he kicks them out is because if he leaves them in the laboratory, their consciousness is going to infect the other people that they have in there that are prisoners for mating purposes and experimental purposes. They're going to affect the whole, they're going to destroy the whole experiment. We got to get them out of here. These people are, they're dangerous to the experiment. We're trying to make a, a doggone working army of slaves here. And this guy's going to, he's going to send a conscious virus to every single one of these people, letting them know who they really are. And they're not going to want to work for us anymore. Plus they outnumber us. So when they figure out that they have the power in, in them to do whatever they want, we're done. If you like this video and you want to see more amazing content, go ahead and check out the next video on our channel.